Hey, everybody, it's the coach. You're tuned in to Sunday Night Football on EA Sports. Coming up next, we've got what should be a good one between the Denver Broncos and the Houston Texans. I'll join you again at halftime to look at some of these stats and scores from earlier this afternoon. But for now, it's Sunday Night Football. And on the call, as always, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, we are pleased as always to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Denver Broncos and the Houston Texans. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Texan ball club entering play here. They come in losers of two straight, so they're trying to right the ship here a little bit. They're teetering a little bit, aren't they? And now things could really go south if they lose this game, so they understand the importance of playing well and stopping this streak. Meanwhile, for the visiting Broncos, they too were losers last week, so they're also hoping to get back in the win column. Something's got to give in this one, right? Both teams want to start a new streak, and they both want it to be a victory. They The first quarter of the season already in the rearview mirror, and off we go in week five on EA Sports. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. And a glance here at their quarterback standing six foot three. And what I'm looking for from him today, the things every quarterback is looking to do lead his team to a victory. Doesn't matter whether he's throwing it, running it, handing it off, however he has to do it, as well as exhibiting some leadership, that's what he's trying to accomplish. Now the first carry here for Philip Lindsay. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. And this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. On second down, a run with Lindsey. After a gain of five, they'll wind up being about a length of the football short here on third down. Defensively, here are the starters for Houston. They're going to need to be strong against the run in this one. They're not an elite unit. They're not, as what you'd say, the top part of the league against the run. They're a solid group, though. They do a good job. What they're looking for in this one, though, is an elite performance. On third down, Taylor. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Let's go. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. On first and ten, it's Lindsey looking for a seam but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense. Line nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Rashawn Gary just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. Now, that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. A little check down to Lindsey. And to the 46, he goes and no further. So he is well short of the first down marker. It's a gain of 11, but they're still well short. It's fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. So here are the Texans now with a long field ahead. And out will come the leader of this offense. And that, of course, is their signal caller. What I enjoyed this week is that you asked to talk to his offensive center before the game and find out a little bit more about him and 
what the relationship is. And that was a pretty positive story, wasn't it? Yeah, and really what I took away from that is just how it has permeated throughout the entire offensive line, the relationship they've had. It's really a group that's in sync. They care about him. That's the thing. They really care. And when you care that much, you're going to play that much harder for him and give a better chance to lead the team that wins. First down, and they stick with Eckler. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. We become so accustomed to it, you, you sort of take it for granted. You really do, but he is so good that every team in his division, every year, is trying to make sure they draft people charged with trying to block J.J. Watt. So far, hasn't been too successful. And he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. And let's take a look at the Texans' offense. And I think we'll see a renewed sense of urgency out of this team this week because they have to make sure they don't waste this homestand. They had a home game last week, lost it. Now they've got the second straight. They've got to take advantage of it, get a win before they head out on the road. And that's complete to Croft. And he lost the football. It's picked up by the Broncos. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around, and we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Rashawn Gary, his second sack of the night. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Now it's Lindsey. It's a gain of seven on the ground, but they'll be faced with third and long. And now some motion before the snap. Man, this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. Yeah, maybe they were coming with a blitz that time and it caused a jump. I think if we saw it, you know that they saw it. Might have been a little discussion down there. Bad guys coming, pick them up, pick them up. And someone jumped. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He'll find Lindsey here. If they didn't have that penalty a moment ago, it'd be a first down. Still a nice 13-yard pickup. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are. You know, make him make someone miss in the open field. They were probably hoping to get him a little bit closer for a shorter field goal, but he was able to get it done from deep. Nice little tester for him to begin things, huh? I think he was hoping for a little bit more of a chip shot. Instead, they made him stretch it out a little bit, but he's got to feel great now that he put it through the pipes. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. The pro bowler DeAndre Hopkins, the intended receiver. And it's second down. But look now at the starters defensively for the Broncos. Against the pass, they're toward the middle of the league, number 15 in the NFL. I think if you talk to their head coach, you'll get a nice answer about how much he likes his team and what they're doing. But at the end of it, he would admit there's definitely room to improve. On second down, Eckler. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Now back to throw. Throw left side complete. It's Hubbard. A big one there for the Texans, 18 yards. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Running on first down, Eckler. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. 
That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Second and 14. He's got Fuller. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. A nickel set defensively for the Broncos here on third down. They'll drop to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Credit the sack to Von Miller. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes Come through on, clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. The Texans' defense heading back out now, ready to get their cracks again. And despite being down on the scoreboard, this unit, they've had some big-time hits. Sort of like us at practice the other day. <laughs> I saw you take a running start at that blocking sled. You took it down. <laughs> Bounced off like a rubber band. No, no, not at all, but you're exactly right. They are doing their job, but they want to add takeaways to it. You need to have more of those to go along with the big hits we're seeing. By the way, when I tried that and I bounced back, I noticed that you laughed with everyone else. <laughs> You didn't, you didn't try to get in my corner. No, no, no. Someone had just told me a joke on the other yeah, side. Right, I missed right. that. Totally missed it. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. A pass there over the middle to start things out. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. On the counter, Lindsey. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Six yards the pickup, and that's a first down. A look at the numbers a week ago for Lindsey. 22 carries, 65 yards. And we all know he had a big workload last week, so I'm eager to see if they decide to back him off a little bit. Personally, I hand it to him 20-plus times again. When a running back's locked in like he is, I want him to keep touching the football. Call it a loss of two on the play, and that'll make it second and 12. On second down, it's Lindsey. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to bring up a third and about seven left. He'll drop to throw. He's got his big tight end, Fant. And he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36-yard line. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Good starting field position for him as they come up for... Oh, he tried to pitch it, and the ball's loose. On plays like this, when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. They'll try to pick up the first with Eckler. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. On, they have the first down with that gain of four yards. 3 nothing after one on EA Sports. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He's going to look deep in zone for Hopkins. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Jalen Mills. They brought the house that time on the young rookie, maybe a little rattled through the pick. 
And you have to be prepared for a lot of pressure as a rookie quarterback because most defensive coordinators are going to test you that way. So when you see that, the ball's got to get out of your hands quickly, and that means your receivers have to understand they have to break off their routes quickly as well. Now Cortland Sutton and the rest of the offense getting ready for their next drive. Not only does he not have a catch, I don't, I don't think he's been targeted in this game, but they're winning. And if you ask a receiver of his magnitude, he'll tell you that it's because everyone is focused on him anyway. Okay, you've taken it away. No catches, no targets, but we're still winning. I've opened things up for the rest of my team. I know how receivers think. <laughs> They've been using him as a decoy, and effectively so. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Here's Lindsey. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Here we go on second and 12. He completes this to Sutton. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. Denver has a first down on the 15-yard play. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Bronco first down. Seems as if the passing attack's starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open holes in the defense. Then he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Here's the second and seven. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. Yeah, and on third down, maybe said, forget about the sticks. We want six. The kick by Marr is good. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. Maybe a little fortunate there. That was leaking a little, maybe leaking a lot, but he got it. Yeah, he actually was able to make it work. How about the body language, though, right? As he's watching that ball leak to the right, trying to, trying to bring it back in. And had just enough to get it done. Here he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Bradley Chubb doing what he does best, getting that sack. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. This is a counter play, Eckler. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. They'll look to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Bradley Chubb able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, 
touchdowns. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. So now they operate back from their side of the field here, second and long. A run with Lindsey out of the gun. And he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. The Broncos on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is going to be third and 13. He'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one, they were just unable to complete the pass. Out of bounds and close. The question, was it a touchback? No. They'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. Excellent placement. And off that bounce, Charles, I didn't know where it was going to go. It can be an inexact science as to where they place it, but they say the two-yard line. Yeah, I don't know how they really determined that. And let's face it, at the end of that play, one side's going to be happy. The other team's going to be unhappy. So I, what do they do, shorten the hypotenuse? I mean, how do they figure that out? You know that stuff. You're the smart guy. Oh, no, that's you, partner. Well, not a game that you're going to go crazy about, but when you start at your own two-yard line, any type of space is good for the offensive guys. Yeah, you just can't go backwards from here. They did it. Now we'll see if they can keep it on schedule here on second down. J.J. Watt makes another tackle there, and, and it's for a minimal gain. And let's face it, if that's all you're going to get running the ball, you're not going to have much success against him and his team. Or, yeah, you better find a way to go around J.J. Watt, which isn't easy to do. It's really not because you got to try everything. Can you go around him? Can you go by him? Can you influence him to get him out of position so maybe you can wall him off? He's a really sharp, intelligent player as well as a physical specimen. They run on first down, but it only produces a gain of two. It's second down now. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Here's second and eight. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game. So you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Now Cortland Sutton and the rest of the offense getting ready for their next drive. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally, he feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that, too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate. Keep him right in this zone here and call it a day because otherwise he can really decimate them. Better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Texans will take over with a first and ten. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. And I, I never played quarterback, but I'm thinking as a quarterback, you're a little bit into the game now, second quarter, you're losing, you're not playing well, probably feels like a lot of weight on your shoulders. Certainly does, but it's something that quarterbacks have to be used to because they're always carrying around that weight. So how do they adjust the weight? How do they make it work for them? How do they work against it? That's what we're going to find out going forward. Yeah, he'll be trying to get all that weight off his shoulders here on this drive. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted.
picked off by Bryce Callahan. And he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. Second interception for him now here in this first half. And you got to think he's a rookie, Charles. How much does confidence start to become a factor? I think that's a great question because that's what they're going to check on when he gets to the sidelines. The coach is going to check on it. His teammates are going to check on it because when you haven't done it before, it's not something that's part of you. You got to see how you're going to react. Let's see how he bounces back. Yeah, because two interceptions for him in college and a half. I mean, that just didn't happen. Philip Lindsay and the rest of the offense heading back out. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro, bro, bro. Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. That'll bring out second and goal after the gain of five. Second and three. Rush coming, and he's taken down. When you're this close to the goal line, you've got to expect pressure from the defense, so the ball's got to come out fast. Got to get out of his hands quicker. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. They'll look to throw on third and goal. That's going to be caught by Kirk. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Coming up in a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. The coach will have stats and scores from earlier today in the NFL. Marr able to put this one through, and that will make our score 9 to nothing. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. Getting set to go again, DeAndre Hopkins marches back onto the field. Looking down at the stats here, realizing he has no catches. They've targeted him twice, but no catches. So how do they get him more involved, Charles? You make sure he touches it on routes that he likes to run. Maybe even run a reverse or some type of a jet sweep so he gets his hands on the ball and get him active and involved in the game. You just try and find ways to get him going, and it doesn't have to be something that's big downfield. Maybe kind of like in basketball, just a shooter seeing the ball go through. You get him a rep, get him more comfortable. I agree with that totally. Maybe set that solid screen and give him an easy look. Well, to this point, no catches. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. I think you'd agree that looked like the right call from up here. No doubt about it. What everyone has to understand is that the officials are going to be right on the play each and every time. You may not like the call, but they're usually spot on. Now the pass, and it's into the arms of Hopkins. And he's got this down to the 35. A big one there for the Texans, 18 yards. Now they, they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? Back-to-back -back good plays. Have them on the move on first down. I'm coming. I'm coming. Looking to throw. And the grab by Croft. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. So now then the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. You got nothing. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. That's complete right around the eight. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Second and one. 
And got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Tyler Croft, his second touchdown on the season as they are now on the board here in the first half. Coaches must really like to see that from the quarterback because he's had the interceptions in this game, but they're able to connect on the touchdown pass. And teammates love to see that because they know that they miss blocks during a game, but they come back and make them later on. They miss tackles, right? They miss making plays, but the spotlight is magnified on your quarterback. And when he stands up to the pressure and comes back and throws a touchdown pass after throwing some picks earlier, they feel great about that guy. And likewise for him personally, as a rookie quarterback, has to give him more confidence. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now Cortland Sutton and the rest of the offense getting ready for their next drive. He's the star wide receiver, and he's doing his thing so far here into the second quarter. And how you get distinguished as a star is each and every week performing to a high level no matter what they throw at you because you're always wanting to take him out of the game if you're a defensive team. How do you press him, double him, triple him, all those things. But the best players show up each and every week, solid games and some spectacular ones. And he has showed up time and time again. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. They'll look to throw here. This one complete to the running back, Lindsey. Now the Broncos going to oh, yeah. use the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Second and five. And that going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Back to throw. Open man is Taylor, he's got it. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. It's a 39-yard attempt right hash. The kick by Maher is good. And that will push the lead up to 12-7. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. This is taken near the 13. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. Likely time for just one final play, and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people look at it and go, well, maybe you take a shot here. Maybe you get some momentum going into the half. What's the flip side of that? You do something crazy, quarterback gets hit, ball comes free, and now you're down an even bigger margin. Go ahead and take this one. Go to the locker room, start over. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome in, everyone, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get you caught up on what's going on around the NFL. From there, let's head off and check out a second game. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back and forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And now out comes Houston. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk 
when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission. Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Here's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. Call it a pickup of seven, and it'll make it a second down. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. He'll look to throw, and he fires one incomplete. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. Now back to throw. And that will be incomplete. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder. You think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him, and I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first, because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. Two sides to every coin. This is the bad side of missing the 58-yarder. Now they start at the 48. A throw on the quick slant, going to be complete. Yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. This is third and one, very likely four down territory even if they don't get it though. They'll try and run for it with Lindsey. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. An effective seven-yard third down conversion. So from the 36 now, first and 10. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. This is the tight end fan. And he'll have a gain of three to the 33. The completion good for three and it's second down. Back to throw here. Open man is Kirk, complete. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. On first down, Lindsey. They'll be brought down at the 21 after a pickup of four. On second down now, it's Taylor. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Let's go, baby. Seven yards there and a first down. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. He's got his big tight end, Fant. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. A gain of eight there on the eighth play of the drive. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. And he'll be brought down here at the three yard line. Give him two yards, that sets him up first and goal. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. They'll try to run with Lindsey. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. They'll look to throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage, after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. Makes the score. 
So yet another field goal to end a drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often, but you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. Play to win. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails... Less of a field goal attempt for him. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. Now Eckler, and an alley to run. And he's got the first down here and then some, but a penalty flag down. This could very well be coming back. That hold coming from the middle of the line, the center. And it's difficult for him because sometimes you've got people right over you, and as soon as you snap it, trying to get your hands up and block them. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but the other team doesn't get it. That's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. And Denver getting set to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point? The kicker. Exactly. You put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe I don't know about toe that. Toe <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. This quarterback now, a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad, first and 10. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He was looking to get it to Phillip Lindsay there, and that'll bring up second down. So it looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. And he'll be down deep into Houston territory. It's a big play there for the Broncos. 53 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. He'll dump this one off to Lindsey. And all the way down inside the five to the four. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Three red zone trips have yielded just two field goals for them to this point, so they'll be searching for something more on second and goal here. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line, second and goal. And it's intercepted at the goal line. 
Zach Cunningham with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down to hands of the wrong team. Out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. That's good for a Texan first down, a 12-yard pickup. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. On third down, here's Eckler. Now a flag comes in from the umpire after a gain of about four. And this looks like it's going to be holding. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. So it doesn't look like they're going to be able to build off the turnover. Well, the defense certainly did its part. It got them the football. But you're exactly right. It looks like they're going to have to punt this one away. And it's not a turnover, but doesn't it feel like one after grabbing the momentum with the defensive play? Yeah, and they had all that momentum after getting the football, and now zapped right back in the other direction. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And they had a nice little drive going last time through the interception in the red zone. Costly. Bad enough to throw it anywhere, but that drives coaches insane when they're thinking about, hey, we've got a shot at points already. We're already in a spot where you're thinking you've got three on the board for sure, and to come away with nothing, that's a really tough one for them to swallow. Yeah, will they make up for it? It's a big play there for the Broncos. 38 yards. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to find Noah Fant, the tight end. And that'll bring up second down. Line of scrimmage, the 31, as they line up second and 10. They'll run here with Lindsey. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Out of the gun now on third down. He's got his tight end fan. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. His fifth catch tonight, and it's good for a first down. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. They'll look to throw now on first down. That's going to be caught by Kirk. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. It's a 10-yard gain there to set him up first and goal. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. They'll set up a throw, and he's going to be dropped. Back at the 15-yard line. Jadebian Clowney make that now eight sacks for him on the season. 
He is proving his worth defensively. Getting the sack here, that comes after being named the AFC Defensive Player of the Week for his performance in last week's game. He's stacking games together, isn't he? I mean, you just mentioned what he did the previous week to be named AFC Defensive Player of the Week. Continuing to play at that level. And when you get that kind of confidence going, those kind of guys are hard to stop. Looking to throw. This is caught. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. Nothing to pass or defense. Trailing in the fourth this close of a game, that's a penalty you just can't afford. It's an absolute killer, and it's one that drives coaches and teammates. And he will take it in for a Bronco touchdown. Philip Lindsay, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Broncos push further out in front. Solid job up front, really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. Yeah, that was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run, end result. Six points. Touchdown. Brett Maher on for the extra point. And the lead is up to 15 now. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it was capped off by a Philip Lindsay touchdown run. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And now out comes Houston. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Second and one. And the catch made by Hopkins. Touchdown, Houston! DeAndre Hopkins, his third touchdown now on the year. As they're now just an extra point away from getting back within one score. And sometimes those slants, they can be so tough to defend after the catch. It, it just happens so quickly. And really, what gets set up there is how quickly everything happens. Ball's out of the hands of the passer in a hurry, and he just takes it and goes. And he went all the way into the end zone. And now in a nine-point game, they'll still just need to go for one here. And it's good, so that will get them back within one score. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Second and nine now. His throw incomplete. Christian Kirk, the man he was looking for, and it's third down. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him try to convert on third and nine. And able to find Kirk complete. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. How about 25 yards on third down? They'll take it. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. They'll drop the throw. And his pass incomplete. 
After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Shotgun snap and a give to Lindsey. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Defense. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. On play action, they'll throw. He'll find Taylor, that's complete. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. The linebacker, Zach Cunningham, there defensively to make that play. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Second and 10. And he's going to have the hook up to Sutton. His fifth catch tonight, and it's good for a first down. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They'll try to run this one in, and he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down, so let's see what this is about. Late game, that hurts. Take the touchdown off the board. No doubt about it, and this is where you make a great movie scene, right? Go in, rally the team. Okay, we lost points there. Let's get it back. Oh, no, he lost the football. And the Texans scoop it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, partner, here's where team football gets tested a little bit because I know the defensive guys were over there chilling on the sidelines, and all of a sudden, they heard the sudden change call because that fumble puts them right back on the field, and they've got to go out and finish the game now themselves. Absolutely. Nursing that slim lead here in the fourth, a costly turnover. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. After some early struggles running the ball, they've really picked it up. Early it just seemed like there were no holes there. Now all of a sudden, the holes seem to be there. I don't know if that's just my imagination. And give them credit that they kept their confidence because sometimes when you get stuffed big in the running game early, especially for an entire half, it really makes you retreat a little bit, but not this group. They always have the confidence. They just get their assignments down. They get in sync with their runners and off they went. Holding offense. Well, there have been a ton of sacks. They were just trying to prevent another. So what you're telling me is the conventional way has not really worked for them, huh? Not at all. Not at all. So he tries to grab him here, and they still get caught. And he's going to get this up to the 24-yard line. A gain there of 21 yards. Back to throw now on first down. And the grab by Croft. And he will force his way forward for a yard or two, but I have a good feeling this will be coming back. Umpire threw the flag, usually always indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpires get different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. They're going to look to throw. And he rifles one incomplete. DeAndre Hopkins once again the intended target at its third down. Back to throw. And that will be incomplete as well. Boy, the numbers throwing the football just not trending in the right direction. Last week he was under 50%. He's under 50% again here. And we haven't gotten an announcement but it appears to me that he might be a little dinged up and is just trying to play through. You know, he's one of those tough guys that wants to answer the bell each and every play for his team. That might be throwing off his accuracy. 
The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly, they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field. And to come away with nothing, that's difficult for a team to handle. And difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. Now back to throw. Open man is Kirk, complete. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first thanks to a flashy little spin move. That'll put him up over 160 yards receiving now for the game. They can't seem to stop it. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. Now left side on the swing pass. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Second and two. He completes this to Sutton. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. So that one will be accepted. So a critical mistake, roughing the passer. Now it's first and goal. Back to throw again. And it's caught. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Three yards is the gain that time. Second and goal. On second down. It's Taylor. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Denver. A great play there. His second touchdown on the season. And the Broncos push further out in front. And they're able to run it in. It started with the battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. Extra point by Marr, up and good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So that drives seven plays in length. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to go. take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Check curls, check curls, check curls. They'll look to throw here. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. J.J. Watt in there to drop him for his 11th sack of the year. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Back to throw here. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Terry. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that's knocked away and incomplete. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And this is going to be incomplete. The Texans tried it, but they come up empty here on fourth. And the Broncos are going to get the football back in great field position. 
So now with a little over two minutes to play, the road back gets very difficult. Difficult, but still not impossible if they go ahead and play this thing out. Now the defense has to come up big. They've got to go for the strip of the football on each and every snap to try and give themselves a chance. Justin Reed, the safety, made the tackle. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Taylor. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. That's on the big guard, Gabe Jackson. Now a carry for Lindsey. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. You'd have to think likely another running play coming here, second and 11. They'll go again with Lindsey. He gets it forward for four, maybe five, but the flags fly. And this one could be coming back. Well, that's Garrett Bowles, the former first-round pick, the guilty party. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. He'll look to throw. He's going to have the hook up to Izzo. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. On third down, Taylor. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. A 36-yard attempt. And his kick is indeed good. And that will make this now an 18-point ball game. Well, it's hard to put your finger on whether this is something to celebrate or something maybe the offense is embarrassed by, but that's now six field goals he's made in this game alone. Yeah, he's bailed him out quite a bit so far, but it's very comforting to know that you have a kicker that's got your back. This is taken about seven yards deep, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. He'll drop to throw. He's going to let it fly. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Roughing the passer, defense. Of course, the game can't end with a defensive penalty, so they'll get one more crack. So now you get an untimed play, which should be the last one, unless it happens again and there's another defensive penalty. Now one final throw here is incomplete and that is how this one will come to an end. So this one will wind up a Denver victory and they say it's never easy to come into Denver to win because of the altitude. Uh, they look pretty comfortable in the altitude. They certainly did. I'm not quite sure how they got prepared and it's always been a big debate about what to do. I lived out there at one point. I lived in Colorado Springs. And I remember saying to someone after my second or third day there, like, this altitude thing, this is no big deal. And day four, it hit.
and it hit hard. And it took me a while to get ready and get acclimated. So some teams, they like to come in early, try and get, re you know, try and get on a schedule and feel good with it. Other teams say, forget it. Let's not let the effects jump on us. They come in as late as possible, as close to kickoff and play. Whatever way they did it, it worked in this one. So for the Broncos, they move back over 500 at three and two now on the year, and they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for Houston, they'll fall to one and four with a loss, and they'll try to get back to their winning ways next week as they head to Indianapolis to take on the Colts.